What's up, everybody? It's your boy Stafford, and today we're going to be talking about Free World Monitor. As you can see, this product is right here in front of me, and there is actually a, it's going to be a few things about this product that we like, and a few things that we don't. But you already know what we have to do first. We have to roll that intro. <laughs> So this free world monitor right here isn't the best, but isn't the worst. Nonetheless, you're going to hear my thoughts about it in this video, and I'll leave a link to this product in the description. So I wrote down a few things that I like about it and a few things that I don't. So we'll talk about the pros first. So one of the pros that I like about this camera is that it's 4K. Now, as you know, I'm shooting on the Canon EOS R, and it is a 4K camera. So when I'm out there trying to, you know, make my short films, as I'm sure some of you seen, a good amount of those are shot in 4K. And it's nice to have a monitor that I can actually display that same resolution that I'm shooting on my camera. It was a lot harder for me before when I didn't have a monitor and shooting by myself as like a one-man band. But now that I actually have a monitor, and now that I'm actually able to actually view what I'm shooting right next to me for one it makes composition a lot easier and that resolution is just mm, muy bueno. Another thing that I like about this camera is the price tag. It is not expensive at all and if you wait till a certain holiday then you can even get it on a you know slight discount which also again isn't bad but if you was to buy it on a regular day it is not expensive at all it costs about a hundred and fifty dollars give or take you know around certain times it might go up by a couple of dollars and it might go down by a couple of dollars and then the holiday time it might also change just want to show you guys the body of it a little bit it is nice and sleek and the reason why I have it in front of me today is because I get to look at myself and because I'm talking about it I figured I get it keep it nice and in the forefront so you guys can also take a look at it normally when I am shooting I probably would have it off to the side not actually in frame because it might be a little distracting but for this video you know we're just gonna leave it in because this is a product that we are talking about so without reading the instructions I did find it actually easy to navigate by just using these arrows up here right on top press the menu button and then you can easily and then use the left and right up and down quite simple it only brings up a menu on the left hand side and then as you scroll through up and down to pick which of the main section you want to go through and then left and right to actually pick on the sub main sections and whatever you want to do so if you want to add histogram the RGB you're also able to do that as well through this interface so the learning curve on this monitor or at least free world in general as a brand compared to other uh, camera monitors the learning factor is quite slim and that is one of the things that I do appreciate about this uh, monitor. Also one of the pros about having this monitor is it gives you three custom buttons right on top. So it gives you the F1, F2, and F3 that you could actually program to be whatever you want because when you was going through those settings it allows you to customize each one of those settings to have them in place. For me personally, I keep the histogram up, I keep focus up, and I keep false colors up, although I don't really use that feature too much because I kind of just use my eye to make sure that it is in focus and don't really need to use false colors. Once you actually get used to using a monitor, used to composition, used to colors, used to lighting your scene, you could kind of get used to seeing it with your eye instead of using false colors but it is one of those useful features that you can use if you're into using that feature anyway and that's another thing I do like about it. It, it you can leave the histogram on it you can leave RGB on it and you can leave the volume of your audio on on the screen as well as the grids so I wish 
the grid that it did give you was not only the rules of third. I wish I had that diagonal grid as well. So just in case you wanted to put some uh, while you're making your composition on two different points. Because on my camera, I'm able to do that, but it doesn't fully replicate what's on my camera on the screen. So the pro final pro is actually the screen display, it's bright enough so you could actually view it outside with the sun up. I can't tell you how many times you're out I'm outside and I'm looking in the back of my actually looking at the back of my uh, LCD screen on the camera and the sun is so bright that I'm not actually able to see what I'm looking at. I'd have to take it out and flip the screen in a certain direction so I'm actually able to view. But let's say you're shooting a wedding that could actually be very distracting and so this monitor right here you're actually able to view outside it perfectly and for those situations when you're outside and it becomes way too bright even though you shouldn't have that problem it comes with a lens hood and it isn't the best material but it gets the job done but the display on this is beautiful, displaying beautiful colors in 4K. And did I mention that it's inexpensive? Now the cons. So the cons to this camera is that it comes with an HDMI cord, which you was, you're saying, Stafford, wait, that's not a con. Isn't that a pro that it comes with an HDMI cord? Saves me money for buying one. Mm. It can go either way. So the one it provides for you is the HDMI to HDMI micro, where in my case, yes, I can adapt it to my camera, but my card, my camera uses the, the mini, so the HDMI mini instead of a full HDMI. So for me, using this cord is not feasible, and so I, I went out to just buy another cord for what I specifically needed for. I didn't buy the adapter for it for the simple fact that I didn't want it to be even longer. And then for un some, for some unforeseen circumstance, that dongle breaks inside of it because of the length of it. I don't want that, so I just bought another cord. And to me, I feel as though that's a downside. Who knows, I might use this HDMI micro for some other purpose later down the line. So it's not a total waste, but I do feel as though it's a con that you're not able to choose which cord comes with this monitor for what particular camera that you have and what port you need. Con number two, it feels cheap. I mean, at the price point of $150, can you really complain about the cheapness? For me, I'm not complaining about it because it is a step up from using my actual phone as a monitor even though in some instances that isn't bad but the app for Canon isn't the greatest so actually having a monitor works way better and the display versus using a monitor to your phone different ball game step ahead of the game but it does feel cheap though when you press these buttons, it just feels like something from the 90s and not something that was made in the 21st century. I've seen and I've used briefly other monitors from like Atomos and Small HD and those buttons on those just feels way nicer in the hands, way nicer to press, to feel. As soon as you press the knees, it's like I'm back again to a black and white TV. And it shouldn't be like that because if I understand that the price point of it is $150, but you put 4K display in a $150 monitor, you could at least make the buttons feel nice. You could at least make sure that it doesn't feel cheap. They could have used a lot more nicer material, especially because Free World brand itself is a well-known brand It's not one of those new brands that just popped out at the blue one day it's been around for a while and they could definitely invest in making nicer quality that is still affordable now don't get me wrong i don't feel as though that this is going to break anytime soon or the button's going to fall out but nicer material will feel a lot better 
Another thing I don't like about it is this lens cover right here that you put on for the lens hood. I notice when I'm putting on the Velcro, the Velcro on it itself that's on the lens hood doesn't fit on to the Velcro that's on the monitor itself. And I also notice when taking off the lens hood that the glue within it starts to lift up, which tells me that the more I put it on and take it off when I'm doing outside shoot versus inside shoots, that eventually that this will eventually come off and I'm going to need to perform some surgery just to get it back on. And I honestly shouldn't need to do that because I'm hardly shooting outside. Many times I'm shooting inside in a controlled environment, so I don't need to use the lens hood. But the simple fact that the few times that I have, it's coming off already, and I only had it for a short time. Free world, if you're watching this, please get this fixed. Shouldn't happen. Now my final con to this is, it's not touch screen. Now, I was kind of at odds to say if this is a pro or a con, but seeing how we're in a 21st century majority of the technology or devices that we're using is touchscreen you would think that this display right here would be touchscreen as well i'm not too upset that it's not touchscreen because it's a display and i need to view it while i'm filming and doing other things such as making youtube videos right you would like to see yourself and if you're using touchscreen Yes, the convenience of it is a lot faster. Yes, we're getting with the times of the 21st century, getting with the new norm. But the other side to that is, do you want fingerprints on, on the display that you actually need to view yourself to make sure that you're in focus, to make sure that the composition is right? I mean, I'll leave that for you to decide. I put it down on the con because for me, I'm always in a controlled environment, so everything that I need to actually keep the display clean and for me to view is it's around me. I can pull out my draw and pull out something to clean this desk right here. I can pull out something right here. I'm in a controlled environment. So touchscreen for me would have been a lot more useful, especially because the build quality on this is it's trash. But guys, that wraps it up for this video on the Free World 5.5 inch monitors. Let me know what you think about it in the description. And, and again, do what your other YouTubers always tell you to do and hit that subscribe button, hit that thumb button. And guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Salute.